Once the crew verifies that the cables are safe, they train them in the vault. When training the cables in place, they ensure that there is some slack in the cable in case a mistake is made that causes the line workers to need to recut the cable in order to correctly complete the splice. Training the cables to their final position also means it's less likely that they'll need to be moved later. Moving the cable can cause the conductor strands to become uneven, which can create weak points in the conductor splice. The line worker follows the splice kit's instructions to prepare the first end of the cable by taking a measurement and making a mark on the end of the cable jacket where it is to be cut. A special stripping tool is used to score the cable. The line worker then pulls one strand of the concentric all the way down to the scoring point, which makes removing the cable jacket easier. Once the cable jacket has been pulled away, he then wraps tape around the conductor at the scoring point to keep the concentric wires from damaging it. He peels back the concentric and hammers it into place. Then he tapes it to keep it safely out of the way. A cold shrink tube is placed on both of the cables. He then uses the template provided in the splice kit instructions to measure the correct amount of cable to leave, marks a mark, and cuts the cable. Now the line worker again uses the template to determine where to remove the semiconductive shield layer. The semiconductor scoring tool, set for the depth of the insulation, is used to remove the semicon insulation shield. The blade is set so that the insulation is not damaged during this process. The semicon is then peeled away from the insulation, ensuring it is not scarred or nicked. He uses a pair of pliers to peel away enough of the semiconductive layer from the insulation and pulls it all the way to the point where the cable is scored. The line worker uses a chamfering tool to taper the insulation at an angle to the cable to reduce sharp edges that could score or damage the splice body. At this point, the other crew member has already completed his end of the cable and the two are ready to be spliced. They'll use a connector, sometimes called a sleeve, to join the two cable ends together. They check the fit to ensure that both ends of the conductor fit securely into the connector. When they're confident in their work, they'll crimp the connector with a mechanical press to bond the connector to the conductor. Before we see the splice made, let's take a look at a couple of the tools used to apply the compression to the connectors. Two of the most common types of application tools, or presses, are the mechanical press and the hydraulic press.